What I'm going to be looking at today inside of this video is using explicit formulas for arithmetic series. So arithmetic series are um, summations of arithmetic sequences. All right. So arithmetic sequences, if you remember, are sequences of the form a sub n equals a plus, and we'll call it n times d, and d is our common difference. And A is our initial value. Now, what we're going to do is we're actually going to um, get a formula for the summation of these series. So, for example, I've got the sum. And we're going to have the sum K equals 0. We're going to start at the 0th term all the way up to N minus 1. So we're not going to go to N. We're just going to go to N minus 1. And this is, again, going to be A plus and then KD, where K that's our index, okay? And what this is going to end up equaling is going to end up being a n plus d times n minus 1 times n all over 2, okay? Now, we should talk a little bit about like how it is that we actually end up with something like this. So what we'll, we'll use is we'll use some very common, um, uh, common methods or, excuse me, common ways of kind of breaking up summations. So one of the things that I do know, I'm going to notice, one, that A is a scalar. That is, it's just a number that's being multiplied by every term inside of the sequence. And then D is also a scalar. And I have a summation. So what I can do here, because the summation is what we call linear, is I can pull out my scalars, okay, and I can separate out my addition. So I get the sum, K equals 0 up to n minus 1 of, and we'll have an a, and then that's going to be left with a 1. So we basically factor out the scalar, and when I divide a by a, I get 1. Plus, and then this is going to be d times the sum, k equals 0, up to n minus 1. And so notice the scalar gets pulled out, and we're then left with k. Now, because k is the index, k is always got to stay inside, right? We've always got to keep our k inside. Anything that you're like, um, but anything that you multiply by k, we can bring out, okay? And we can separate out the summations. So one thing that I want to get here is, is that the sum k equals 0 up to n minus 1 of 1 is just going to equal n. Because what we're going to do is we're going to add 1 n times, all right? Notice that we have the total number, if we're going to be inclusive, the total number of times that we're going to run the summation is going to be n minus 1 plus the 1 that we have for 0. Okay, so that ends up equaling n. So this ends up equaling n. All right? And if you go in, you kind of think about it, you're like, oh, okay, if I go from 0 to 5, I'm going to have 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Notice that you've actually summated 6 times there. Okay, and that's that addition to the 1. And then we'll come over to here, and what we've got here is we've got this second summation. And I'm going to actually use just an explicit formula for, I've got k equals 0 to n minus 1 of k. And again, this is going to end up giving me, it's going to be n minus 1, or excuse me, times k, is going to end up equaling n minus 1 times n all over 2. Okay, and the, the, reason why, um, the reason why that works, and I talk about it in another video, is because basically what we're doing is we're adding each side of the summation. So we start out with like a, the 0, and then we have the n minus 1, and then I have a 1 and an n minus 2, and I end up with n minus 1, and how many times am I going to do that? I end up with that n divided by 2 times. Okay, I've got n total terms, um, and uh, when I add up, you know, the pairs, when I add them up pairwise, I end up with n divided by 2, n minus 1s. Okay, so that's going to be the second part of our, our explicit formula. So I end up now with a, this gets substituted in, this is a n plus d times n minus 1 times n over 2. And that's how we end up with our explicit formula. So now that we've got that, let's actually take a look at some, uh, some questions. And we'll just, uh, you know, kind of do this. Um, it's pretty simple once you've actually got the explicit formula. And we can, once we can figure out, you know, what are the symbols mean, which ones are index, right? What do we mean by D? What do we mean by A? Once we've got all that covered, this is actually not all that bad. So let's say, for example, we've got K equals 0 up to 10 of 5 plus 6K. 
Now, what I want to do, I want to uh, recognize a couple of things. One, using my summation, the sum k equals zero up to n minus one of a plus dk, okay? I'm gonna notice that a equals five. I'm gonna also get that d here is equal to six, and then that n minus one equals 10, right? Notice that I use the n minus one because the n minus one is what I've got over here. So n minus one equals 10, that means that n equals 11. Now our explicit formula states that this is gonna equal a n plus d times n minus one times n all over two. Plugging this in, my summation will end up equaling five times 11 plus d is six, six times 11 minus one times 11 all over two. This ends up equaling 55 and plus three times 10 times 11, which ends up equaling 385. And that's our solution. Let's do another one. Let's say for example, and you'll see how this comes in really handy because you could go in and you could evaluate each term here in the summation. But um, what if say for example, we have K equals zero up to 2000 and we want 10 plus 3k. So now I've got a problem. I don't actually want to go out and calculate each and every term. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to utilize my information here. So I've got that um, a equals 10, d is going to equal 3, n minus 1 equals 2000. So that means that n equals 2001. I go in, plug in my values, I'm going to get 10 times 2001 plus 3 times 2001 minus 1 times 2000 divided by 2. And I'll plug that into my calculator. And what I get is I get 6,023,010. And that ends up being my summation. So basically, when you're going out and you're doing these kind of things where you're using the explicit formulas, the real trick here is just to go in, look at the summation, pull out the information from the summation that you need, okay? Be pretty systematic about it, I generally am, and then go in and put it into the explicit form. We're gonna look at one more circumstance, and that is, is when, what happens if you actually have something where we don't say, for example, start at k equals one. So what happens now if what we have is we have a summation of this kind? Notice that this doesn't start, right? This is not k equals zero. And in order to use our explicit formula, we do need that k has to equal zero, it has to start at zero. So what do we do inside of that situation? Well, if we're working inside of that situation, what we're gonna do is we're gonna utilize what's called the change variable, okay? So we'll, let's say we'll change it to j, all right? We're gonna change it to j, and so if I want j to start at zero, okay, then I'm gonna let j plus two equal k, okay? So j is gonna equal k minus two, all right? And so that actually means that j is gonna end up equaling, end up getting starting at zero, okay? So I plug in j plus two equals k. So at the bottom, this is gonna change my value to j plus two equals two. And at the top, now the top is actually a k as well. So for the top part in my change of variable, I'm gonna need that j plus two is gonna equal 3000. So j for the top part here is gonna end up equaling 2988. So now my summation is gonna to go to 2988 at the top. And then I notice that I have a k in there. Remember k equals j plus two. So this is gonna be six plus four times j plus two. So if I rewrite, now what I have, I subtract over the two to both sides, I get j equals zero on the bottom, 2,988, I subtracted two from the top, and now I have six plus four j plus eight, which is, and if we take the sum now, that's j equals zero to 2,988, and it's gonna be 14 plus 4j. Notice now this, right, we can use the explicit form. 
Okay. So doing that, we'll move this over to here. We're going to get that A equals 14. We'll get that B, or excuse me, D, pardon me, is equal to 4 still. That's always good news. D equals 4. And N minus 1 is going to equal 2,988, which is 2,999. Plugging it into our explicit formula, we get that the summation is going to end up equaling 14 times 2,999 plus... And this is going to be 4 times 2,999 minus 1 times 2,999 divided by 2. Plug it into our calculator, we get 18,023,999. Okay, so there you go. So you can actually also uh, utilize the change of variable here in order to um, use the explicit form for the arithmetic, the arithmetic series. Now, very important. If you happen to have a series, you notice that what you have is an arithmetic, uh, an arithmetic sequence in here, but you see that you're not starting at zero. Go in, use the change of variable to turn it into zero, and then go use the explicit formula. Okay. So, just to review, your explicit formula for using uh, for arithmetic series is the sum k equals zero to n minus one of a plus kd is equal to an plus d times n minus one times n over two. And there you go.